So past Friday and also the weekend through, I was actually in Denmark, Copenhagen to meet up with Unity, do a few cool things and kind of just become like a tourist for a little while throughout the weekend, which I'm going to tell you guys a lot more about soon. So don't worry, there is going to be a lot more news. And I basically arrived yesterday, so I'm home now. Finally, I get to make more videos, but still I'm a little tired and feel... A little dead inside, you know what I mean? But that's normal, I mean you can expect that after coming from a vacation or like a trip like that. Anyway, let's talk about the video. So today I actually decided that we'll start up the new show that I talked to you guys about before, where we basically cover the basics of Unity, like both for beginners and also intermediate developers. So in case you're not like a beginner of Unity, you can still watch it. And just kind of try this new overview of the topic style that I've been trying to implement onto my content lately. So what I want you you guys to do obviously as per usual is let me know in the comments if you enjoy this new style and this new videos series that we were trying to start up start up <laughs> really i already messed up so the the new series that we are trying to start up there we go um and obviously let me know in the comments what you think and also leave a like on this video if you want to see more of unity 2018 basics because i know a lot of people are new to unity so i want to cover those topics up and now with that being said let's begin with the video Alrighty, so here we are in Unity, and before we begin, I just want to mention that if you've been a subscriber for a while, you'll notice right off the bat that the layout in Unity is a little different for today's video. And that's only solely because we are going to put a, little, a lot more focus onto the scene window or the panel here and the inspector panel, because obviously we're going to edit the terrain object inside of our scene window. Meanwhile, we're going to edit all the and tweak all the values inside of our terrain component in the inspector. And as you can see here, we have quite a lot of segments to actually cover in this video. So we're going to go through them very quickly and have this overview style that I mentioned before. So first and foremost, let's begin by raising and lowering your terrain. To begin with, there are a bunch of brush presets you can use through. And the ones that I usually have are the smooth circle, which is this one and the more outlined one. The smooth one is actually pretty good for reflecting the changes more onto the surrounding parts of your terrain, which can be useful for when making hills and stuff like that. And the outlined one is a little more for like precise results, like if you want to correct your you know, the detail on the cliff or a mountain you just created. I also pretty much use the last three ones to have, to kind of add like a bumpy texture onto my roads and paths. If I have like a forest, I want to have a little bit more tessellated kind of look. I just pretty much decrease the opacity and boom, go with this one. Speaking of which, you actually have a feature called opacity and another one called brush size. So basically after picking your brush preset, you can modify the brush size, which is going Going to be visible in the scene window as the blue tint right here as you can see and also the opacity which is going to be the amount of units that your terrain either rises by or raises by or lowers by each second i usually have it at one for the opacity and the bright size obviously to whatever i wish for and to paint around freely you obviously just click and hold your left mouse button and you can also lower the terrain by holding down shift while doing so and next up we have a feature called paint height which is most likely my most favorite feature Feature of all of them right here <laughs> at least for now it basically allows you to set a specific value for height which then acts as a limit for how high up the terrain can go while you're raising or lowering it and the height is actually right here and why this is useful is because I'll give you an example so you'll quickly realize when you're using unity that with the current terrain system you can't lower a terrain when you first add it by using the raise and lower feature because you can lower the parts that you have obviously you know raised up but you can't really lower the other parts. And that's simply because the minimum value of the height Unity's terrain system can go below right now, or at least reach to, is basically zero. So um, below zero, you can't really go there. And a lot of people usually ask me for my speed level designs, like, Saiku, how did you, you know, work around that and get to lower your terrain? And the way I do it is basically by going to paint height, increase bright size and opacity to be maximum, set the height constraint to be something I wish for, like for instance, let's say 20 for this. Then I pick the outline brush to make sure that it's as big as possible. And then I just start painting until I have the entire terrain completed. There we go. So now I can basically go to raise and lower terrain, lower the opacity right here and also the brush size if I want to and basically hold down shift 
click with the left mouse button and I can lower the terrain as much as I want to until it reaches zero. And you'll realize that when you modify your terrain like this, you basically have a little bit of jaggy outlines and edges onto your terrain bumpiness, and which is normal, which is expected. But basically, you have another feature called smooth height, which is the next one, which you can obviously increase the opacity of, and you can paint here in order to remove the jaggedness and make sure that the height of the very specific chunk you're painting right now is matching the surrounding height so that you can actually smoothen out a hill or uh, remove all these jaggy outlines and edges from your rivers and stuff like that. And the more you increase your brush size, the more it's going to read the surrounding height so that it's going to kind of match up a little bit better. I often just go for the smooth circular tool right here or the brush preset or I just go for the outline one to make sure that it's as big as possible once again. Now, this one right here, the paint texture tool is probably the one that I use the most when I just have fun when I pretty much began with Unity for the first time, well, like when I was 12 years old. And oh my goodness, was it fun because you basically use this to add textures to your terrain and has some, we have some cool values to tweak here actually, which is one of the reasons to why I wanted to cover up this part especially, which a lot of developers actually forget to use in their level designs. And I see them on YouTube and I'm like, why? Why don't you use it? So let's make sure to check them out so that you don't make the same mistakes as they do. Now, as usual, to begin with, you obviously have the brush presets as per usual, and you can use anything that fits you the most, honestly. I tend to go with the smooth and outline brushes here as well. Then we have the brush size, which is very important, obviously, depending on how big of a chunk you want to paint at once. But then we also have opacity and target strength. These two values basically let you control how much opacity you want one texture to have when you overlay it by another texture on that. So if you, for example, have like we have these two textures right here, the rocky one is already added. And if I want to add this mud just a little bit and not too much and kind of overlay the mud onto the rock, I just basically decrease the opacity and target strength and paint here. Now, if I wanted to obviously have a little bit more, you know, visible so that people can see it, I can obviously increase it and boom. And I can also make it 100% here and one here on the target strength. And it's going to be the most visible one and you're not going to be able to see the underlying texture underneath it. And in order to add a new texture to your scene or to your terrain, you can simply click edit textures, pick add texture, and you can basically just attach the texture here and also the normal map here. You can also tweak the size of the texture you're adding, which allows for more realistic looks. I actually suggest you to first add your texture normally as I have done here and then click on edit texture instead and then edit the size from here because now you're going to be able to see it inside of the scene window when you're actually doing it as you can see right here. You also have a feature called metallic and for some shaders and for some textures, you also have a feature called smoothness, which in fact, this rock right here has. And smoothness basically kind of like makes it a little bit more reflective in case it's going to be like a wet ground. And metallic basically makes it look, well, more dark and metallic as per usual. <laughs> and the size obviously, as you can see, is a little bit decreased here. So I can just put it back to whatever I want to. Trees are also very important for your levels, obviously. And you can easily add them and paint them to your terrain by, by using certain features, such as turning them into billboarded images when the player is far away so that you save on performance, which is also done by the terrain system automatically which is beautiful and to add a tree and make use of those features you simply do the same as when we did which we did when we were actually painting textures so you edit trees add tree and pick your tree prefab you also have features such as the tree height which is basically you can you can either pick it to be randomized through a value, a couple of certain values you set yourself, or you can set it to be very static and just set it to be like a very static value, basically. If you pick it to be random, you can actually pick it through extending this little slider that we have right here. I usually have it around this kind of size or width, and then have it right here. Now, depending on the prefab's length itself and also the height, obviously. Now, one beautiful feature here is that it can automatically, you can pick to automatically lock width to height, which is beautiful to use when you have a tree that you don't really wanna, obviously when you play around with the height of the tree, it's going to make it taller, but it's not going to increase the width unless you have this checked in right here. And that's gonna make the trees look either very, I'm gonna say thick, 
or very thin and at the same time very tall, which you probably don't want to have as a result. So you just check this, boom, you do your height editing and everything is going to be done automatically for you. And of course, if you don't want to have this, you can check out the tree with automatically or per manually actually by yourself. You can also check the color variation, which is going to add a little bit of hue color into your tree on certain light conditions. And next up, we have something called details or paint details, or as I like to call them grasses, because that's what they literally are. Now, for adding a new grass texture, you can actually repeat the same process to add it. And always make sure that you check billboarding unless it's not done automatically, which it should. But if it's not, just make sure that you do it because it's going to add a billboarded texture image so that it makes it look a lot better. And I actually have a tutorial video on how to edit all these values right here, like the width, the height, the healthy color, dry color. And especially, I specifically focus on to making realistic looking grass in Unity on that tutorial video. And I'm going to make it easy for you, so I'm gonna link it in the description in case you want to check it out. Now, except for that, you obviously have all the regular features here, such as the brush size, you can change the opacity, and the target strength, like when you're painting the terrain. And obviously, these are for how many how many grass instances you actually want to spawn at once. And this allows you to optimize your game a little further, and obviously, if you want to optimize even more, you actually have an entire segment for that called Terrain Settings. Here, you can basically change values, such as if the terrain will cast shadows or not, the material, detail, or basically grass distance. So how far away is the grass going to be rendered and stuff like that. And how much density you want your grass to have. In case you want to optimize your game further, like I said before, you can check out the detail density and distance variables since they each play a huge role. And you can play around with them here and here. For even more optimization, because obviously you want performance in your games, I would also suggest you to check Billboard Start, which is right here, which basically, this feature basically determines how far the player has to be from the trees for them to turn into that billboarded flat image that I, as I mentioned before. Having a greater Billboard Start value will impact your performance, so always make sure that this value is not way too high up. A few more features that are relevant to um, you and your games and that you get to play around with is the wind settings. So you can play around with the wind speed, the size, which basically means the, the impact size of the wind on the grasses. And this is basically for the grasses themselves. And you also have the bending of the grass. So speed basically determines how fast the wind strikes the grass. I usually have it a little bit lower than the standard value. Size is once again the impact and I have it a little bit lower as well so that it doesn't look that powerful. And bending, I usually keep it a little bit, just a little bit lower, like slightly, because you obviously want the grass to be mentionably bending so that you, the player can actually see it. You also have the option of playing around with grass tint, which is going to be the color that the grass tints into or transitions into after a certain amount of time in certain specific light conditions as per usual. And you can also, I, I usually don't actually use this, so that's why I have it set to be green. But usually it's like a this kind of color, which is like a little bit of orange. Um, if you like the regular color of your grass, you can pretty much just keep it gray. The reason I keep it gray is because it's going to be in the middle of black and white. If I have it white, it basically increases the brightness of the grass as well, which doesn't look that good. And black makes it just look way too dark. So I don't really, I want to go in between and not really in between, like not central, but just in between somewhere there, as long as it fits with that very specific texture that I am editing. Finally, down below here, you can also edit more terrain-based settings like the terrain width, height, length, and stuff like height map resolution in case you're making your own textures. I don't really suggest you to check out them, but I often leave these values alone except for terrain width and length in case I want a larger terrain, of course. Because if you change this to 1000, and you change this to a thousand, you will real time see that it changes obviously right here as well. Alrighty, and that is pretty much it for this video, guys. Hope you all enjoyed. Once again, like I said in the beginning of this video, this is like a new series that we are starting. So make sure to let me know in the comments what you think about it, what you feel about it, and if you want me to continue or cancel this series, because I kind of want to like cover the basics of the of, of this engine for newcomers and people that are getting into game development, but also for intermediate people that don't really know the the specific parts of 
of Unity. And I still want to have it like a overview kind of style that I tried implementing in this video. So make sure to let me know what you think about that as well. Now, before ending the video, guys, I just want to give you a huge shout out to every single one of our patrons right here named Cupola, G.I. Jojo, Richard Stance, Tromber MCP, and everyone else that is supporting the channel. You guys are amazing. You make sure that I have enough to actually support these free content and obviously make more videos and strive to actually make more content for you guys, which is amazing. Um, and if you guys would like to check out more information on how to become a pleasure or a supporter of the channel and this content, make sure to check out the link in the description which says Patreon and you'll be taken right there. And that's pretty much it. So once again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet so that you stay up to date for new content. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and would like to see more. And let me know in the comments if you have any feedback. Now with that being said, once again, I'll catch you guys later. Actually in the Discord server or in the comment section. So peace out guys. Have a good night. Bye bye. I got my red dress